Hi guys, it's Harma with the Harma channel. Please go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching and let's start. So I prepared 10 things to help you understand what is it that you have to look for when you hire an assistant. So what is your first step? I think you should find out if you're actually qualified for an assistant. Just because you have a busy day doesn't mean you will be busy for next few months. Don't hire because your ego tells you you need an assistant. Don't hire an assistant because you want to let go of doing what you need to do, such as lead generation, growing your business. You're the rainmaker. There's a book called Eat That Frog from Brian Tracy. Read that book, it will explain everything I'm sharing with you. If you are the business owner, it is your job to create business opportunities for yourself every single day. And your assistant, it's supposed to be there to help you grow, increase your income, productivity. Number two, have a clear job description. What is the position about? What is day-to-day -day operation looks like? There are people, they need an assistant because they want their productivity to change. But there are people they're looking for an assistant to change the quality of their day. Those are two different assistants. That alone, you have to be very clear how you create the job description. Because if you don't know what you're gonna hire for, trust me, they wouldn't know what they're hired for either. Third one is my favorite have a mutual expectations. It is not the job description. Mutual expectations for me is not what I'm gonna do for them, it's about what I'm expecting from them. And I expect every hire that I do, they give me their expectations. If they're talented, you don't wanna lose them. So it's important to clear the expectations up front. Number four, behavior assessment. There's a lot of options out there called DISC, D-I-S-C. There is another one called AVA, which is stands for analytical vector behavior. And I'll tell you why it's important to have a behavior assessment. So you don't wanna hire someone that is not a fit for the position. I believe every talented person will do anything. They just don't do it for too long if they're unhappy. That is very important to understand. What is it that you're looking for? And part of the process of hiring, do the behavior assessment. Number five, remember the 90 day rule. Zero to 30 days, they watch you and they just learn. From 30 to 60 days, they do the work. You watch them. That is still part of the training. And the last 30 days is you let them do the job and then maybe every day you sit down with them and talk about what is working for you. How is my communication skill set with you? And then you give them a feedback. You tell them what's working, what's not working. The talented person will function really well if you give them the opportunity for the first 90 days. Number six, bad habits. If the person has been moving around a lot, but they've been doing the same thing, red flag. Do you know how difficult it will be to change them to do your way? I like to hire raw talent. If you have integrity, you work hard, and you have a common sense, I can teach anything about real estate. This way, you have someone that you develop, it's your way, and you can have a relationship from the beginning with a very clear expectations. Number seven. Be clear about what you're gonna pay. Make sure you have the budget for it. I do believe that you get what you paid for. So if you have an assistant and you have expectations all the way here, but you're paying this much, they will leave. So remember to hire the skill set that you're looking for based on the budget you have. Number eight, focus on the skill set of the person you're hiring. I had an agent once told me that I hired an assistant She's amazing. She can do social media. She creates content for all my marketing. She will do my accounting and she's willing to pick up my dry cleaning. I was like, well, I promise you she will not be doing any of that 100%. So I want you to know, it's okay to hire an assistant who's gonna do a few things for you, but just know that they are not going to do 100% in one of those areas. So pay attention to what is their skill set and hire them because they will get the job done. Number nine, accept understand and remind yourself of their goals. One of the books that you can read to help you with this is called Dream Manager by Matthew Kelly. It's an amazing book. They will help you to understand that people don't leave because of money. They leave because of their lack of leadership. So if you want to retain talent, you may want to understand what is their personal goal. Number 10, hire slow and de-hire fast. So if you have to do behavior assessment, you have to do job description, you want to know their skill set, it will take more than two or three appointments. You are supposed to be very slow in hire, so you get to know them. 
not just because you want to get to know them, they need to get to know you. So slow down the process, go in detail, understand each other, write the expectations, and then if it's going to end, let it end sooner than later. You owe it to them. I hope this will help you. Good luck with your hiring process. Write me a comments and I'm happy to respond and good luck.